My name is Mark Beal, and I'm excited tonight to present um, tips, insights, research, especially as we're uh, in a phase now where a lot of Americans are unemployed and out of work, seeking that next opportunity in their career. Um, the title of my presentation, Three Lessons to Achieve Job Success, Brand and Market Yourself, Mobilize Your Network, and Engage Your Target Audience. Due to the current pandemic, more than 22 million Americans are unemployed. In the past four professor weeks- professor from college. In the past four weeks, I've received phone calls, emails, text messages from executives 10, 15, 20, 25 years into their career who find themselves now out of work, as well as college seniors who are on the verge of graduation and are facing a, an employment uh, hiring freeze as well as even freshmen, sophomore, juniors in college who are preparing for a summer of internships, a summer of experience, and now are learning that internships are being canceled or postponed. Um, so a lot of people are facing the same situation right now as far as what do they do next in the career? How do they secure the next job? Um, this opening slide here, you see a lot of light bulbs. There's a reason I use light bulbs. During this presentation, my hope, my goal is that you have several aha moments, several light bulbs go off. Maybe they're things that you already knew, but you just needed to be reminded. But the goal is that throughout the presentation, you do have these light bulb moments, things that you learn, things that you're reminded of that you can apply to your own individual journey, whether a college sophomore or junior, a graduating senior, or someone who's been in the workforce for 15 or 20 years. A little bit of background about myself. Um, I spent the first 25 plus years of my career in public relations and marketing, uh, working for one of the leading uh, public relations agencies in this country, Taylor. And I got the opportunity to work not only with Fortune 500 companies, but I was able to uh, create campaigns around some of the most high profile sports and entertainment platforms the Olympic Games, the Super Bowl, even the Rolling Stones. Currently, I'm a full-time professor of uh, public relations at Rutgers University. And it was my students at Rutgers who inspired me to author my first book, 101 Lessons They Never Taught You in College. After every single class, students would come up to me in person, by email, and they would say, how do I prepare my resume? How do I conduct a phone interview versus Zoom interview versus an in-person interview? What do I do after the interview? Should I send a thank you note? Should I email? Should I write a note? How do I get informational interviews? How do I network? All those questions which came on a regular basis from students I was teaching at Rutgers University, I converted the answers into lessons and published my first book in 2017, 101 Lessons They Never Taught You in College. Every lesson in that book is about the transition from college to a career and ways to help you make that transition as seamless and as successful as possible. Most recently though, I partnered with the founder of an organization called The Breakfast Club of New Jersey, a fellow by the name of Frank Kovacs, who founded an organization following 9-11 when, uh, when many people were out of work, similar to today. And he created this organization, a volunteer-based organization, which was a career support networking group the Breakfast Club of New Jersey. 18 years later, the Breakfast Club of New Jersey has helped thousands and thousands of people secure the next job in their career. And of course, today, the Breakfast Club of New Jersey is as active as ever, as again, we have 22 million Americans uh, as of today out of work and that number is growing. After um, I authored 101 Lessons They Never Taught You in College, organizations, career support networking groups, asked me to come in and speak and provide um, some of the tips, some of the advice I'm gonna to provide today. And when I spoke to the Breakfast Club of New Jersey in early 2019, I left the meeting so inspired because I had just met 100 people who were out of work, but they were proactively seeking that next opportunity and networking. And I thought as I left there, I said, there is a book here. There's a book for people who are out of work, who, in, who are in different stages of their career. And by the time I got home that day, there was already an email from Frank Kovacs saying, would you like to co-author a book to help people who are out of work? So while this book was published in um, August of 2019, during a time when the economy was doing quite well and people were employed, 
it is more timely than ever now. More people are in a career transition. More people are seeking their next job. Um, so the timing of this book now is, is ideal. And some of the lessons in this book is what I'm going to bring to life uh, today in, in today's presentation. Every time I present, especially when I present to a career support networking group, I always like to lead with this. I may not teach you anything new today, but I plan to inspire. There's a lot of things I'm gonna discuss here today about your personal brand, about networking, about securing opportunities for interviews. That might be old news to you, but I hope the way I present it inspires you in a different way. I hope it inspires you to take a slightly different approach to securing that next job in your career. So again, while I may not teach you anything today, I hope and plan to inspire you that when we, you leave here following this presentation, you are inspired to take a new and innovative approach to securing that next job in your career. Whether you're in IT, an accountant, or some other profession, starting today, starting today, you need to think and act like a marketer. So again, whether you're a sophomore or junior in college looking for that next internship, despite the challenges that we're facing this summer, whether you're a senior graduating from university, ready to start your career, but there's a hiring freeze, or whether you've been in an industry for 15, 20, 25 years and have been laid off, and now you've got to find that next opportunity, it doesn't matter what you do for a living, what career you've had, but starting today, and this is the first light bulb moment of several in this presentation, you need to think and act like a marketer. You are the chief marketing officer of your career. You are the one in charge of your career. Many of us have probably never thought this way, especially if we haven't been in marketing. We think of ourselves as, again, IT professionals, accountant, project managers, which is great. That's what you do. But how you go about doing it and how you go about evolving your career and, su and, su and successfully securing that next opportunity in your career, you've actually got to think and act like a marketer. And this presentation is going to, going to go into three critical steps of, again, that acting and thinking like a marketer, no matter what industry, no matter what profession you were in. This is critical. If there is only one thing you take away from today, this slide is the one. As you proceed with your uh, job search, as you proceed with networking, think and act like a marketer. You are the chief marketing officer of your career. Nobody else is. Your career is a unique journey. There's only one of them. It's your career. It's your journey. You are the chief marketing officer of that journey. You are the one who determines how you're going to market yourself, how you're going to promote yourself, how much content you're going to create out there and share on LinkedIn and other channels. So again, if there's only one takeaway, one aha moment today, please make it this one. I recently was asked to um, conduct interviews around this whole topic of the pandemic and is there a light at the end of the tunnel for job seekers, for again, graduating seniors, for people who have been in, in, in um, jobs for 10, 15 years and now out. And I said there is. And I actually came back to the editor with five reasons why I believe there is light at the end of this pandemic for job seekers. And I'm just gonna to touch on those uh, quickly as we go into uh, the presentation. At some point, none of us know when, but at some point, whether later here in 2020, into 2021, there will be a rehiring. Once we get through the pandemic, there will be a rehiring. Companies who've placed employees on furlough, who've made layoffs, they will be back to business. It will not happen overnight, but it will happen which means now is the time to prepare for that rehiring. Now is the time to get your marketing in order for that rehiring. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Secondly, the workplace will not be what it used to be. There are going to be major changes to the workforce, major transformation to the workplace. Um, so many of us are now working from home, which means we're working in a different way. 
we're working remotely, we're working virtually. Well, I think there's a lot of businesses and companies that following this pandemic are gonna realize that, you know, perhaps not everybody has to come to work physically to a building every single day. Perhaps some people can work from home once or twice a week. Um, when I talk to Gen Zers, those who are in college, they like to talk a lot about WFA, working from, every, working from anywhere. Because again, using technology today, you truly can work from anywhere. So everything that uh, many of us are doing from home now could become more the norm moving forward, which could mean more opportunities um, for jobs and openings. Third, everything that you've learned over the last month or two once the pandemic hit. You know, you learned how to use Zoom for the first time. You learned how to record um, videos, perhaps, for video presentations, perhaps, for the first time. Um, you learned how to participate in Google Hangouts for the first time. All those things are what I call upskilling or reskilling. In other words, you've just picked up all these new skills that two or three months ago you never even knew. All that plays to your advantage as, again, you look for that next opportunity. All of those things should play into not just your resume, but your brand narrative as you go and conduct formal interviews, informational interviews, and even networking meetings. I believe more than ever, now that we've all been um, forced to live and work and socialize as a result of this pandemic, I believe that the community of what I call collaboration is closer than ever before. I believe that people want to help each other more than ever before. And I also believe that applies to job searches and networking and helping. Um, I believe that's another reason for hope, another reason for a light at the end of the tunnel. And that leads to the last point here is those who are employed, those who will be employed in a month or two or three as we come through this pandemic, I believe because of this community of collaboration, they're going to want to help even more. They're going to want to help those who are out of work. They're gonna to wanna to make connections for you and help you make connections as well. So don't underestimate the power of your personal and professional network. Those individuals who come through the pandemic with their jobs, with their employment, or perhaps even changing the employment, I believe will be more apt, more inclined, more eager to help those who are out of work. And they do wanna be asked, they just need to be asked. So, the focus of today's presentation, again, as I mentioned earlier, we talked about the idea of you need to be the chief marketing officer of your career, are these three lessons, which I want to hit them now, and then at the end, I'll hit them again. First, as the CMO of your personal career, of your journey, you need to understand how to brand and market yourself. So many of us, I think, go through our careers and don't realize that we actually are brands. Every piece of content that we put out there, whether on LinkedIn or Twitter or some other channel, it's a representation of our brand. Everything we do, every skill that we learn, every experience that we have, every success that we have, it's part of our brand. And so it's important that during this time we take a step back and we really think about our brand moving forward. And how do we want to market that brand? And I'll talk about that in the next slide. Once you understand what your brand stands for, what your brand narrative is, what your elevator pitch is, well, then you want to go out and mobilize your network because now you've got a story to tell, a compelling story to tell, an engaging story to tell. And you're going to go out and really mobilize your network to act on your behalf. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how you actually do that in a strategic manner. And last but not least, we hear a lot about artificial intelligence, AI. Well, I'm a big proponent in HI, human interaction. And even today, while we're all working remotely and socializing remotely, human interaction can be a powerful force as you seek that next opportunity in your career. Human interaction doesn't necessarily have to mean face-to-face -face physically, but human interaction can be picking up the phone, um, reaching out to people. Um, and so I'm going to talk about the idea of engaging uh, with others, those you're trying to reach uh, via human interaction and bypassing the technology, the automated technology that so many companies use today to screen applicants for jobs.
So first and foremost, this should be another light bulb moment. If you haven't thought until today that you are a brand, think that way, right? When you think brands, you probably think of brands like Coca-Cola and Nike. Sure, those are brands, those are global brands. You though are a brand. Think of yourself of a brand, even, even compare to LeBron James or another global athlete who's famous. Yeah, LeBron James plays basketball. But that's one of many things he does. His brand is everything he does. He's a content creator, right? He's a producer. Um, he's an endorser of products. All that is part of his personal brand. He started um, schools for underprivileged. Again, that's part of his personal brand. So what I'm recommending to the many people who've called or emailed me over the last few weeks and saying that they're, what do I do? I'm graduating in a few weeks. How do I get a job when there's no jobs openings? Or to the executive who was laid off after 15, 20 years in their career, and they say, what do I do now? What I'm saying is, use this time now while there are hiring freezes, while business is, not, is, is on hold while we're not operating business as usual, use this time now because we rarely have ever had it before to kind of get organized, sit back, determine what your brand is all about, what your brand narrative is all about, the value you bring to a future employer, and really organize that story. I think for most people, they go to a job interview, and as they're going to the job interview, they're thinking through what it is they're gonna share. They're thinking through their storytelling. They're thinking through uh, their brand. At that point, I hate to say it, it's kind of too late. By the time you walk into the job interview, you should have gone through this well in advance. So I'm recommending to anyone who's reaching out to me um, over the past few weeks is, use this time now to take a big step back. Think about your personal brand. Where has it been? Where do you plan to go? And all the things that comprise your brand. So what does that mean? All the channels, content channels. What kind of content are you producing? What kind of content are you putting out there on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on other channels, Facebook? All that is a reflection of your brand. Um, how are you communicating with those in your network by phone or email or text? Again, it's all part of your brand. But there's other things that are part of your brand that a lot of us don't think about or we don't think um, are that important. And it's really important, again, as you take kind of inventory now and you conduct a self-audit. It's really important to think about the successes, um, the wins in your career, success stories, case studies, because those all are part of your brand as well. And those are all things that you wanna share and communicate as you network, as you conduct informational interviews, and as you conduct formal interviews. And when I talk about a brand narrative, there's, there's a few different ways to communicate that brand narrative. There's the long form brand narrative where <laughs> during the formal interview process, you, you may have the opportunity to share your long form brand narrative, your storytelling. But there's also the elevator pitch. So you have to prepare for what is my brand? What value can I deliver? What successes have I had in, in, in my career that I can make part of my storytelling? And how do I deliver that in 60 seconds and 60 minutes? Two completely different platforms, but you've got to figure out how do I tell the most compelling, the most engaging brand story, my personal brand story. So the key on this, this lesson is first to take a step back and think of yourself as a brand. Two, to think of what comprises my brand. What is my brand all about? What is my value? What is my unique storytelling? What are the successes that I plan to, to share? And turning all that into a, again, a compelling, engaging story. Um, I mentioned content earlier. Once you figure out, what you, again, what your brand is, your brand narrative, your brand statement, your brand value, you wanna start producing content. You wanna become a content creator. So again, even if you've never been in marketing, 
You want to be producing content, thought leadership content that ties back to you, the industry, the types of jobs you're looking for. It's kind of content you can produce and share again on, on a channel like LinkedIn. Why? Because by the time you get to that formal interview, there's a really good chance that the recruiter or the folks in human resources after they've interviewed you by phone, after they've interviewed you in person, are gonna to go to your channels and they're gonna look at the kind of content you've been producing and distributing over the last week, month, six months. And if they see content there, that is thought leadership content, content about the industry, content about the category, even if it's content you're just sharing and not even creating original content, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, work well in your favor it'll support the story that you've been telling, the narrative that you've been sharing. But if the content is of a completely different nature, um, if it is more just all social kind of content, um, has nothing to do with the job, the career, thought leadership, it could go against you, especially if they're looking at two or three candidates for the position. So again, this is probably the second major kind of light bulb moment of the presentation is if you've never thought of yourself as a brand before today, you are. But more equally important, you need to now think about what is your brand story? What is your brand narrative? What are the values that your brand represents? What are the past experiences, past case studies, past successes that all tie neatly into your brand? I'll, I'll share a quick story on this one. Uh, this is a graduating senior, would have been the class of 2019, and this was maybe two months before graduation and asked if I'd conduct mock interviews with um, graduating seniors. And so I came in one evening to, um, to students at Rutgers University where I teach. And uh, I think there were probably about 15 or so students. And I just said, well, before each student comes into the room, can I just, I want to glance at their resume. I want to look at the resume and get a feel for their background, their experience, where they've interned, all those things. The first student comes in, I get the resume before they walk into the room. And on the bottom, bottom, bottom of the resume in, I'm exaggerating, five point font, it said that she had won a national marketing competition hosted by a leading footwear company. I'm not gonna say the name of the company, in which she beat out thousands of other college students to win this national marketing competition. It was on the last possible inch of the page of her resume in the smallest possible font. When she came into the room, after we shook hands and introduced ourselves to each other, I didn't even ask a question. I said, by the way, did you win this national competition? Yes. Did you beat out thousands of others for this, this national championship? Yes. And I said, you want to get into marketing? Yes. I said, this shouldn't be on the bottom of your resume in four or five or 6.5. This should be actually at the top of your resume in like 50 point font. And her response was, I didn't think it was that important. <laughs> the whole idea is so many of us kind of leave our egos at the door when we're creating our resumes, when we're going in for job interviews. We think of projects we've worked on, campaigns we've worked on, successes we've worked on. Um, and we think, well, it wasn't that important. You know, I was involved, but it wasn't that important. It is important. As you develop that brand narrative, think about those kind of successes winning a national competition like that. That is part of your storytelling. In fact, that's probably the headline or a lead in your storytelling. All of us have those kind of experiences, those kind of successes. But again, because we kind of leave our egos at the door, we think it wasn't that important. It's not that compelling. It's actually really, really compelling. And it could be the difference between getting a job or not getting a job, getting the interview or not getting the interview. So don't minimize anything you've done in the past. As I said earlier, kind of take inventory and do an audit of everything you've, you've done, whether if you're a college senior, that's everything you've done in school, in internships, winning a national marketing competition. If you've been in your career for 15, 20, 25 years, think of all the successes you've had. Think of all the um, success stories you can tell. Um, and then determine which make the most sense as part of your brand narrative, which make the most sense of, as part of your compelling storytelling. And you want to weave those in to your interviews, whether those interviews are, again, via Zoom, face-to-face, -face, or in some other, some other arena. So that's light bulb number two. Number three, um, 
as far as the light bulbs go off, but this is kind of point number two. Now that you've taken that time, you've created, you know, you've taken time, you took the time out, you've done the audit, you've done the inventory, you've started to kind of develop and build your narrative, you figured out which successes you want to highlight. This is the second thing you need to do in a strategic, proactive approach to job hunting. And I have probably written this in an email no fewer than 25 to 30 times in the past five days. And the reaction I get from individuals, whether they're college seniors or uh, executives, you know, 10 years into the career, I never thought of it that way. I think most of us, when we apply for jobs, we take a reactive approach. And that approach is go online and see what jobs are posted and let me apply to them. We need to do that, it's important, but that's what I would call the reactive approach. And we should always be on the lookout for job postings and apply to them. But you need to balance that and complement that with what I would call a strategic and targeted approach. For anyone who's ever been in a new business role anywhere, it's the same kind of approach you would take in new business. They're not posting, you know, uh, new business here, come win it. You need to be proactive, strategic, and targeted in your approach to winning new business. It's the same in winning the job. So as you develop your narrative, as you figure out your story, take this strategic approach to proactively seeking out employers. And the way I explain this is, is pretty straightforward, but I have it here. Depending on where you live and depending on how far you want to commute, I literally tell people just put a pin in that location. So for now, let's just say that uh, a student, uh, we'll even use a student from Rutgers University, is graduating from Rutgers University in May and they plan to live somewhere in the greater uh, New Brunswick area. And so they put a pin there. But this student doesn't mind commuting, doesn't mind hopping on a train or getting on a bus or even driving. So they've created a range of potential places to work that includes New York, New Jersey, even Philadelphia. So they've got a wide range, a wide pool of opportunity. That's great. But here's the important thing. Depending on what industry you want to get into, uh, depending on what kind of business you might want to get into, once you've created that kind of range, you want to now start researching and identifying companies within that region where you want to work. You want to conduct your research. And I even tell my students and, and executives, identify as many as 20, 25, or 30 companies. They can be big companies. They can be small companies. They can be nonprofits. They can be universities. They can be organizations of any kind. The important thing is that you're doing research. You're identifying companies that are based in the region where you're willing to commute to, whether that's an hour away, 20 minutes away, that's up to you. But you're now taking a proactive approach. And I even insist that when people not only research the companies, not only um, gather 20, 25, or 30, but once they've done that, I want them to actually rank the companies. And by ranking them, you're prioritizing them because it's difficult to manage and mine 30 companies at a time. However, if you prioritize them in maybe groups of five, the top five, the second five, you now can prioritize. And so how do you rank companies? Well, one way is, you know, again, based on your research and maybe just companies that have great reviews, you like the culture, you like what you read about them. That, that could be one. Two, it could be a company that you've just admired for many years. It could be a company that perhaps you, you use their products. You, you, you know them from a customer standpoint. Or it could be a company or organization where you actually already have ins. Um, former coworkers work there, former classmates work there. You actually know people who work in the organization. So that's how you start to rank these companies from again, one to 20 or one to 25 or 30. But now once you've done that, you've just accomplished two major steps in this strategic process to secure your next job. You've developed your brand narrative and to go along with that, you've researched, identified and ranked 20 to 25 to 30 companies in your geographic region where you want to work. Those are two major steps that, again, during this time while we're in this pandemic, we've got the time to do these things. 
we've got the time to do this kind of research and homework that's gonna pay dividends a month or two or three or four from now. And that's why it's so important. Traditionally, we don't have a lot of time to, to, to do this kind of in-depth research. We do now. And I'm recommending to all those who call me who are out of jobs now and seeking jobs, this is what we should be doing during this time. So you've now identif researched, identified, and ranked these companies, these organizations that were within your geographic region where you want to go work. Uh, the number one company on that list, you've got three or four people who you know well who work there. Uh, you've done your research and it's been ranked as one of the top companies to work for in New Jersey or in the nation. It has a lot going for it. It's number one on your list. So what do you do next? The next thing you do is again, you mobilize your network, your personal and professional network. And you leverage what I talked about earlier, HI, human interaction. So how do we do this? I, I, I like this approach, which is, doesn't have a fancy name, it's called a job search tool. I'm sure we can come up with a fancier name for it, but your resume represents what you've done in the past. Your job search tool is a much more helpful document for people like me who may be in your network because it's, 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 it's telling and communicating what you want to do in the future, where you want to go in the future, what kind of job titles you're seeking, and perhaps most importantly, it's listing those 20, 25, or 30 companies all on this job search tool. So a statistic I'd love to um, put out there, in fact, it's, it's in my, my current book, Career in Transition, because it's very, I think it's really important. University of Michigan, a study they did, your odds of getting a job through a traditional job search application process, one out of 250. So this is that secondary approach where again, you see a job opening, you hit send on your resume and your cover letter, and you hope that you're gonna get a call back. I'll explain why you probably won't. However, if you can get somebody on the inside of that company, those companies that you researched, identified, and ranked to refer you, to recommend you, well, your chances increase significantly. According to that same University of Michigan study, employee referrals make up only 7% of the applicants for a job. So if there's 100 applicants, only seven came from a referral from someone on the inside, but they make up 40% of the hires. In our book, Career in Transition, we have one of our lessons is be a seven percenter. And what we mean by that is every job that you're gonna proactively seek out, your mission is to get one person either on the inside or one person who's affiliated with that company to make a referral for you, to call the recruiter, to call uh, someone in a decision-making role and tell them they should interview you, tell them they should take time and bring you in as, as part of the interview process. That one simple yet powerful step will increase your chances significantly of securing a job. And again, this all ties back to a proactive strategic approach. So how do you do it? Well, as you can see there, this job search tool is a very simple one pager. Your name, your email, you know, the region where you wanna work, how far you wanna commute, but more importantly, the two other areas are, what kind of titles are you looking for? Um, not the best example, but let's just say you were actually a chief marketing officer, someone who's been in the business for 30 years and you're no longer with your company. Are you only looking for chief marketing officer roles? Because there aren't that many of them. In fact, there's only one per company out there. Or would you be willing to take an executive vice president of marketing, a director of marketing, a vice president of marketing? That's really, really important because those in your network can better help you if they understand exactly the kind of title you're looking for. If you're an entry level employee, you're college, you know, just graduating college, you're probably looking at titles like account coordinator, account executive, assistant account executive, depending on what industry you're in. But you wanna, you wanna identify what are those titles so that again, those in your network can help you. And then the third part of the job search tool are those 20 or 30 companies that you've researched, that you've identified, that you've ranked where you would love to work. Why is this so important? The reason it's important is because when you go to someone in your network, and this is where, again, you wanna mobilize your network. I call it your army. You wanna mobilize your army. Your goal 
is to reach out to individuals in your network, whether, again, former classmates, former coworkers, um, professors, um, advisors in school. Um, the goal is that through this job search tool, the goal is that every person in your network who you speak to, who you meet with, the goal is to get them to identify just one individual at one of these companies where they can make an introduction for you, where they can make a phone call for you. That's it. You don't want to give them heavy lifting. You don't want to ask, can you reach out to all 30 companies? Because they can't and they won't. But if you show them a list of 30 companies and ask them, do you know one person at one of these companies? It's a good chance they probably know one or two. Would you make a call on my behalf? Would you conduct outreach on my behalf? There's a really good chance they will, going back to that idea of a community of collaboration and willingness to help. But if they commit to that, if they do that one simple step, now all of a sudden you've got somebody who knows somebody at that company who's calling you at your behalf and, and recommending that they bring you in for an interview. You just have bypassed the entire online application system. I mentioned a little bit earlier why that approach doesn't work, what, what I like to call that reactive approach. It doesn't mean that if you apply for a job online, you won't get a call and go in for an interview. I, I don't mean it that way, but what's happened over the last couple of years is more and more companies, especially larger companies, are automating the application system using what's called applicant tracking systems, ATS. And they may use different versions of the technology, but at the end of the day, it's an applicant tracking system. And what an applicant tracking system is, is when you submit your resume, the technology is reading your resume, comparing it to the job description or the job criteria, and determining if you're a fit or not. Well, there's a good chance that however you've developed your resume, the technology may not think you are a fit. In fact, I can think of one executive who applied for a job and immediately got rejected, but felt so strongly that he was the best fit for a job that he took this approach. And he reached out to his network and said, there is a job at this company that I think I am a perfect fit for. However, by applying online, I've already been uh, you know, rejected for the position. He had two or three people in his network who did know folks at that company who reached out on his behalf. Not only did he then get the chance to interview for the job, which he initially was rejected for, he actually ended up getting the job, winning the job, because he didn't rely on the reactive approach of just applying online. He took this proactive approach. He had identified this company where he wanted to work. He saw there was a job opening. He applied online, which you always have to apply online anyway. But more importantly, he went to his network and said, do you know someone at this company? Can you make a call on my behalf? And within short order, he was in the final candidate pool for interviews, went through the interview process, and ultimately won the job. That's why you want to take this kind of approach. It goes back to, again, those University of Michigan statistics. Your, your chance of securing and winning that job increased significantly if you take this, again, proactive, strategic approach that combines those three steps, determining what your brand is all about, developing your brand narrative in a compelling and engaging manner, conducting research, identifying and ranking 20 to 30 companies that are within your region where you wanna work, and then three, mobilizing your army of followers, your personal and professional network, but you're, you're, you're gonna help them as much as possible because you're gonna create this job search tool that's gonna identify the kinds of companies and the kind of job titles that you're looking for so that you can make it easy for them to make a call on your behalf and get you into that um, opportunity to get an interview for the job. <clears throat> so the challenge I like to give out to uh, when I speak to groups in person, if it's a uh, career support networking group, and typically I speak to those groups once a month and there's about 100 executives in the room who are currently looking for a job. I finish with this slide. Now that we've kind of gone through these steps, and again, hopefully there were some aha moments and some light bulb moments, the challenge is develop your own job search tool. This one obviously looks pretty basic. You can make it a little more fancy if you want, but it's not a, it's not a document you're giving to this future employer. It's a document you're going to share with those in your network. So the challenge is develop your brand narrative. Use this time that we have now to develop your brand narrative. 
think about the most important things that go into the narrative. Um, as part of that, begin to produce and share thought leadership content on your channels, especially LinkedIn. And those, the, that content should tie back to the industry or the companies where you want to work. Develop your job search tool. And once you have that job search tool, and once you have that narrative, reach out to everybody in your network. Everybody who you, um, again, have worked with, went to school with, have socialized with. Reach out to them by phone, by email, by LinkedIn, and ask if you can schedule you know, uh, a meeting. Now again, today's world, that meeting might be via Zoom, it might be a phone call, whatever it might be. And then take them through where you've been, but more importantly, where you wanna go. Share with them this document, and at the end of that call or that meeting, you know, ask them very simply, is there one company on my list of 30 where you know someone where you could recommend to me for uh, the chance for either a specific job that you've identified or just the chance to get in there for an informational interview to better understand how the hiring process works at that specific company. If you take these three steps, you are gonna set yourself up for success um, when business returns to normal, when the hiring freeze is over, when companies are getting back into that, that rehiring that I talked about that I believe will take place here in 20, 2020 and 2021. So again, just to reiterate, those three lessons to achieve job search success. If you've never thought of yourself as a brand, you are. You wanna develop your brand, you wanna market yourself as a brand. That very first slide where I talked about the idea of you are the chief marketing officer of your career journey. Nobody else is, nobody should be. You can tell your story better than anybody else, but you're it. So from this day forward, think of yourself as a brand and think of how you're gonna market your brand. Secondly, mobilize your network. As I said earlier, when I talked about the light at the end of the tunnel, I truly, truly believe that those who are employed and will continue to be employed are gonna be more eager than ever to help those who are unemployed. I do believe that this pandemic has created a greater, collaborate, a greater community of collaboration where people truly wanna help each other. And if that help is it something as simple as helping you improve your resume to getting you an interview with a company where they have a contact, people are going to want to do that. They want to help as we come out of this pandemic. And last but not least, don't shortchange what I call human interaction. Bypass the applicant tracking systems, bypass the technology that so many companies use as part of an automated application system and mobilize H, excuse me, leverage HI, but really mobilize your network, both your personal and professional network. Um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I always enjoy collaborating with individuals who are seeking jobs and looking for the next opportunity. So please connect with me on LinkedIn, email me, and we'll schedule time to uh, strategize by phone and even go through these steps based on your unique journey and your unique history. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope again, as I said at the beginning, a few light bulb moments, a few ha-ha moments uh, you had as you went through this presentation.